up cold. We are two niggas spoiling movies. Yeah. Brand new columns. That's me. And just in brown for your moving needs. Medium popcorn. Woo! You haven't seen it, well, we're gonna spoil it. Spoil it in your face. That's your warning. Uh. So if you get pissed, it's all your fault. Uh. What's up, little biscuits and sun-dried tomatoes? It's your boy, Eddie Collins. Guys, it's Justin Brown. And we are medium popcorn niggas spoiling movies, but you already knew that. You already saw that in the title, and you also listened to that beautiful song sung sound by the velvet uh, voice of Justin Brown. <laughs> the velvety. The velvety. The velvety. You know what I'm saying. Uh, no, I don't. I really don't. Yeah, I know. I really I, don't. I really know what I'm saying. I, I listen back and I edit this epi- you know, these episodes, and I'm like, man, am I even speaking English? What's happening? But we do have a special guest to help us break down this uh, Indonesian action thriller called The Night Comes For Us. Justin, introduce our guest, bro. So uh, this uh, a young gentleman, uh, we actually uh, went on tour together for five months. We were hosting... A fucking game show at music festivals. Oh, around that's the country. how you know him. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Kay yeah. was another host uh, um, on um, on the tour, but Kay is also a stuntman. Okay. Uh, he's, he's a martial artist. He, you know, he's a personal trainer. Kay does a lot of different things. Obviously, an actor as well. Uh, so this, my, my man Kay. Kay, t- talk to the people. Hey, what's up, everybody? Kay, Ko, uh, you know these this crazy. Oh, I'm, Am I allowed to curse? Oh, to yeah, curse? yeah. Oh, come on now. Oh, come on oh now. yeah. This, this, ain't, this, this ain't a PG this, show. This ain't even a PG-13 show. This is NC-17 like this crazy-ass movie was. And R, I, I, depending on what what's going on. Yeah. Because, you know, you know, we I, get raw over here. And then it's unrated if we, you know, we, we get to look at some pictures. I'm not going to say what oh, kind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Kay, we're going to need you to send some pictures of you with your shirt off. Oh, Because Brandon's going to jack off to it. <laughs> Imagine, right the imagine if we just added a new tier to the Patreon and it's just shirtless pictures of K. Because you're a good looking dude, it'd just be funny to me. I just like oh people, my our fans are just like, who's this guy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just so, random. And we backdated too from when we first started the Patreon, so there's <laughs> hundreds of pictures <laughs> uploaded on the <laughs> Where did Kay's is like, where'd you get these pictures from? I was like, hey, just like, <laughs> from tour. <laughs> so, so you two were touring together. So uh Kay, first of all, yeah. obviously we call him Kay because niggas can't pronounce this motherfucker's r- uh, real name. No. Throw it down. No. Throw it down. Try no to, one can say it. I want I want everybody to take a shot at saying your name. Go ahead. I'm gonna say it or you're No, say you it. you gonna say it. I ain't gonna oh, fuck myself up. Right. This all the time though. So so what it is is Kordiu. 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 Okay. Yeah. Kordiu. Kordiu. Yeah. See, and you gotta Kordiu. say it's Kordiu. wrong like that. Yeah. Kordiu. Yeah. Because it's like um, <laughs> Ryu from Street Fighter. Ryu yes. means dragon. So Kordiu, it's the rain dragon. Oh, it okay. Okay. Yeah. There you go. See, but, th- that shit sounds so fucking dope. <laughs> you know, like when you break down some of these, like the rain dragon. My name is just like of justice or some shit like that. But you got the rain fucking dragon. Like, yo, what the fuck, America? Why can't we have these dope ass names like fucking rain dragon? Yeah, my name means uh, prince in uh, Irish. Yeah, I mean that's that, that's weak ass shit too. <laughs> you, you a prince? You ain't even a king. You a goddamn <laughs> prince. You a you a snot nosed ass prince with a rich ass daddy. Oh my and god! Then- <laughs> Actually, okay. So if I go by like what uh, Google's telling me, my name translate Brandon Collins means Prince Darling. Prince Dar. Oh yeah, you a bitch. <laughs> I was gonna say that sounds gay. As shit. <laughs> I was gonna say- <laughs> Oh, boy. You are a straight up bitch. <laughs> oh, so uh, UVA in the chat, uh, our producer, she said she asked you, okay, if it's Japanese. Yes, uh, my name is Japanese, but I'm uh, three quarters Cambodian and a quarter Japanese. Mm-hmm. So, you did a 23 yeah. and me? Yeah. <laughs> gave, away, gave away your DNA to an unknown entity? <laughs> no, no, no. Just my parents. Oh, uh, okay. Like, what are you? What yeah. are you? They there broke you it go. down. They were like, here's the bloodline. Yeah. Let me show you. Yeah. So, um,. <laughs> But uh, you, uh, Justin mentioned, Kay, that you do, like, stunts. 
right? And so what's your experience with that? And like, do you do stunt fighting, anything like that? Yeah, uh, my martial arts background, like uh, I am a trained MMA fighter, boxing, Muay Thai, jujitsu, a little grappling, wrestling, uh, all that comes together. And I, I train MMA, but I also I'm a stunt driver. Uh, I love being behind the wheel of motorcycles. Okay. I've been set on fire. I've jumped off buildings. Uh What's like it you even set it. on fire? Like, like, how do you, how, what does that do to your adrenaline? Cause it's I hot, imagine that's what it's well, like. Obviously it's yeah. Really I was going to say it was <laughs> hot as hell. And you think you, you expect it. Like I remember the first time I was like, all right, I'm going to be set on fire, but it's all safe. Right. Yeah. So I'm cool with it. No, it's hot. Like you feel the heat. Um, absolutely. Uh, but the adrenaline does go up yeah. cause you can see like the flames across For you, sure. you know? So uh, it spikes, but you just got to keep cool and keep your wits about you. And they don't record don't do your it. sound, right, when you're doing these stunts. Because I feel like if I were a stuntman, they'd let me on fire. i be like, ah, it's hot. <laughs> Fuck up the take. <laughs> well, also, like. Score says he's like, Brandon, please stop <laughs> screaming. First of all, Darling, you think you're going to be working with fucking Scorsese? <laughs> As a stunt? And you're lit on fire. <laughs> As a stuntman, Yeah. <laughs> As a stunt like, portly man being lit on fire. I will say, if I have a stunt man in five years, folks, I went a dark way. Uh, <laughs> just because. So, uh, 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 Kay, you know, just um, correct me if I'm wrong, though. But anytime you're lit on fire, you're really um, on fire. It, it's not really that long. You may be on fire for like maybe like. 20 to 30 seconds maybe a minute at most correct yeah yeah uh there's it's very very rare that you'll be on fire any longer than that if you look back at any scene in a movie or tv show where there's a guy on fire they're like running and then like they're out or it's like a zombie it's like super fast yeah yeah so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, now, so I've seen some things where, like, they put like some sort of gel uh, on you so the fire doesn't spread to your actual skin. Do you know yes. what that is? I don't know the actual word for it, uh, but the, yes, that is the like the gel they put. Uh, they layer it on there, so sometimes uh, they'll put it on your skin. Most of the time, it's underneath clothing, or you'll have different layers. Uh, gotcha. Like, di- yeah different styles for a different type of burns but yeah that gel there is extremely cold and that will prevent you from ever actually burning like through your clothes to your skin and anything like that now what about stunt fighting because obviously this movie the night comes for us it's at the ray level fighting like very choreographed but very raw and gritty and that's because it's with multiple actors who are really good stunt fighters right so Mm -hmm. what's your experience with that and like how technical in practice do you have to be to, in order to execute something like this movie? It's actually interesting that uh, you said that like raid uh, level fight because like Indonesia has its own genre almost. The things that happen in here, we wouldn't be able to watch on like Mission Impossible or Taken and believe it. Or even like Fast and the Furious. We'd be like, that, that doesn't work. But because of uh, their genre style of fighting it takes a lot of work like uh joe taslam the main actor of uh he was in the raid as well the first mm-hmm. one and and he's the main character of this one he said and he's in warrior never, and he's in they'll warrior. never Shout he's in warrior. warriors now he's in mortal combat mm-hmm. there you go. He's so yeah cool. uh, yeah. They just shit the bed on Mortal Kombat because they have two really great ha- actors with him and the gentleman that played Scorpion, who's also in John Wick mm-hmm. Four, and then mm-hmm. everyone else is dog shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. everyone yeah. else is terrible. That, that one was kind of like it, it was hard to live up to the the original from the video game fans and like the classic '90s and things like that. But you have so much talent, and they had to do so many reshoots. Uh, a friend of mine is friends with the guy who played Jax, and. They just had to go back and reshoot so many things. It was really disorganized. Mm. So yeah, even Jax's character, like design wise, he actually looked really good. Yeah. But like they just yeah. gave him nothing to do, and then like they, of course, they didn't even get to the actual tournament. It was yeah. just like practice yeah. for the tournament, which is yeah, weird. That was stupid. Um, yeah, the storyline was all over the place. <laughs> yeah, but so you're saying that there has to a lot of like practice and work to go into executing yeah. these shots. Got it. Yeah, Joe Tazlum said that's what I was saying. Uh, they wanted to recreate the raid in America, and he said it won't be possible because 
the amount of times you know how we have like the union and we have like you can only work 12 hours like they were working through the night if something wasn't perfect they would do it over and over and over so the tedious uh work ethic and like just the meticulous practice to get perfect is what you see in this movie and in the raid yeah and i also will say the issue I, I think with America besides our labor laws and stuff, which are, are good, are good. Right. Um, would be that just guys, just, just let you guys know that the Asian man said that about the labor laws in Asia. <laughs> it was but, not uh, but, uh, eco. You was and um, Joe Taslam, both from the raid series, like they actually are doing these fights for the most part. It looks like I, I know mm-hmm. how things are cut together. And these are shots that are directly on these gentlemen. A lot of times, right? Mm -hmm. American actors, you'd be surprised. Even the people that are like, I could do the stunt. The studio's like, you're not doing the stunt. Like, you know, people that be willing to do the work to execute stuff, like, you know, in an honest, pure way, Mm -hmm. they're they're not even getting the green light from the people that write their checks. So it's like, on top of the people that are like, I'm not doing all this work. Like, I'm not going to learn how to do that. It's just American culture, like, I think it's just not... you know, willing to sacrifice to execute the way that these movies do. Well, I mean, part of that is insurance companies. Uh, I was going to say. Yeah, Yeah, how's Tom Cruise get insured? Well, he's producing everything. True. He's the executive producer. He's like a major producer in the Mission Impossible. Any other uh, production, they wouldn't let him do that. There was a series uh, not too long ago, the Divergent series, where an actor wanted to do a stunt coming dropping from a helicopter to the back of a truck. It's probably like 15, 20 feet. He's like, I can do it. They fought him. They're like, we have a stunt double. He wanted to do it. He did it. He broke his leg. He's a main character. So that stopped yeah. all yeah. of production right there. You know, thankfully they had insurance, but that's why, you know, they they use stunt doubles for things. Yeah. Didn't that after uh, Dylan O'Brien also like down the Diver- Divergent, but like the Maze Runner movies, he broke his back or something. Uh, yeah, uh, there's there's yeah. certain things you know, That's crazy. and it's not even that. I'm I, I've worked with a lot of actors who are like, I want to do this, and they're like, you know, if if it's something that you can do and you train for it, and it's not gonna like end you, like fighting, like the fighting stuff, I think it would be great to do. Uh, I know a couple of stars that are like, this I want to do, like Ryan Gosling, Chris Evans. They're like, you know, I want to do this. I want it to be me. But I know other times, like if if it's a really hard acrobatic trick or martial arts moves, they gotta get a stunt double in there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I also think um, we're not as limber as people in other countries. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> especially I think the richer you are as a star, you know, the the less ability you have to to just let yourself be loose because you're always tightened up because you gotta be that A list celebrity well, no, and no, everyone's no, gotta no, love you. Nah, not necessarily. I mean, it depends what kind of action star you are. Like, yeah, somebody like The Rock. Like he's not going to be doing, you know, he's obviously not going to be at limber because he's, you know, very muscle heavy. But mm-hmm. like, if you have somebody who's more lean, is like a lot of them doing yoga and things like that. That's going to help you be able to, you know, have that. You know, if you have that lean muscle, it's going to it's going to allow you to be able to do some of the things. But if you're doing like acrobatics and things like that, you need to know what you're doing. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can't just be back flipping and hoping that's going to work out. You know, well, yeah, no, no, but even just the, some of the kicks of you know flying kicks and things like that, like that shit ain't easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 I had some people like have asked me to like choreograph stuff and like coordinate, and they just got a bunch of actors, and they're like, "All right, do this fight scene," and I'm like, "Have any of you ever done martial arts, fighting, boxing, anything?" They're all like, "No." And I'm like, all right, I'm going to do the best I can. And all of a sudden, like, the director's coming up to me like, what do you think? Like, they need to work out more? You think it'll be good in two weeks? I'm like, lady, none of these can people can fight. Like, it's not something you can just teach an actor. Like, all of a sudden, you're going to look like, look at uh, Jake Gyllenhaal in uh, Southpaw or in uh, Roadhouse or uh, Michael B. Jordan and Creed. They didn't just go and like, all right, I'm going to look like a boxer. No, they trained intensely for it. You know, most people do this for years or their entire life. And people are like, oh, th- I could do that. And it's like, no, you can't. <laughs> well, you, you know, then the other thing is just like, you know, when you're doing like a fight scene, like you, you're going to get hit. 
Like, yeah, yeah you ain't hit. <laughs> like, for instance, Kay and I did a fight scene, and I punched him right in his mouth. I lay right in his mouth. I hit him right in his slob knocker, and I felt <laughs> good about it. I, said, I knew it. I, I felt it. good about it. You want to know why, K? And you know why I did it. You know why I did it. This man cock blocked me on the road one day, and I'll never forgive you. I'll still never forgive you. Even I'm a married man. I'm a married man. I will never forgive you, K. I will never also, forgive you. He also kicked me in his, my chest, and he didn't have to do that. You did that on Of course purpose. not, Justin. Yeah, I know you did it. <laughs> yeah. Now, train, train professionals, we don't hit each other. But this <laughs> motherfucker, he had a vendetta against me. He took it out on me. <laughs> So uh, we, we did watch The the Night Comes for Us, which is a 2018 Indonesian action uh, thriller that's um, available on Netflix because they um, basically bought the distribution right. So they own it um, for the foreseeable future, right? And it's basically about uh, this dude who works for the triad. But is he one of the six C's? Yeah. Ito is one of them, right? Yeah. Okay. So there's these six C's that represent the South Asian, uh, a- Southeast Asian triad, right? And like the elite soldiers. Yeah, and so he's yeah. on uh, like a mission, so to speak, uh, to take out these uh, like these immigrants, the, the villagers um, yeah. who had stolen um, the drugs and stuff, and they kill everybody. So there's this little girl, and the main character Ito, played by uh, Joe Taslim, is basically like doesn't want to do it. So he kills all the people he's with. To save the little girl. And this is what kicks off a lot of shit. A yeah. lot of people die to save this w- one girl. It's like an in- real, it's an even more intense save a private Ryan. Mm-hmm. This shit was yeah. wild. Yeah, man. Because the girl didn't even have anywhere to go. He just put her on the boat. Where is she going? We have no idea. The triads don't know she's out there. She's going to have a long life. Well, no, no, she's not going to have a long life. She's going to have a very <laughs> oh, short, painful, up. traumatic life. No, for real, well, I mean, though. but it's already been uh, uh, painful and traumatic. Yeah, she's literally watched every yeah. adult for the past, I would say, over 72 hours die. Yeah. Every adult that's come in her path dies. It's like, it's like oh, you've been nice to me? You're going to die horrifically. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get, man, they, they were fucking up corpses in this movie. That's how violent this movie is. Like, I was not expecting how gory it was. Yeah, they, they like, were not fucking complaining. It's like the raid, but like, yeah, it's like the times raid and the 10. raid two. Yep, yeah, times ten. Like together, the raid and the raid two. Then you mm-hmm. multiply that by ten. Like the gore and the amount of violence. Like I was like, oh, this is like the rawest version of yeah. like those movies because this is like we don't even care if people like tell other people about this movie because we just want to be, you know, intent on how our vision is. Because mm-hmm. the raid and stuff, I feel like has some commercial ability. I think this is tough. Because it's so violent. It's like, you know, yeah, the, well, absolutely. it's almost like the raid. Uh, I would say the raid and raid two are on the same level as like Deadpool and Wolverine violence. Whereas this one is, you could tell why it's NC-17. Oh, yeah, for sure. You, you know why it is NC-17. Because like when they're fighting, they fight. And it's oh, also yeah. like the, what the thing I love about, you know, movies from, well, uh, international films, um, especially martial arts films, like, you know, your heroes, they're getting fucked up. Oh yeah, they're not just yes. they're not just a buzz sawing through waves and waves of guys. Mm-hmm. Oh it's yeah, it's like when um uh, uh, when our boy Joe Tasm uh, I don't know was Ito uh, Ito uh, when Ito uh, is out there in that first fight when he well the first fight that we see him it's like like yeah he's he's already hurting he's he's already oh, yeah, hurting yeah, his side and, and, yeah and, and, and like, he's got yeah. bruises everywhere he's bandaged up yeah, he's sl- back all sliced up and shit like that like so there's a lot of things that it's just like oh immediately they they apply stakes into the film so like yes. that's that's the thing that i love i loved about it because like i feel like a lot of the films that come out of the united states it's just like all right guy goes rock him sock him robots through like 20 guys does yeah. it barely gets hit and then, you know, right before he's supposed to fight the, you know, the final bad guy, somebody hurts him a little bit, which gives the bad guy an opportunity to be able to beat on him for a while until he, you know, summons up the power, um, you know, to get him at the last second. So, like, you yeah, know, that final fight bad. between him and um, uh, Arian was fucking. <laughs> yeah, that's a brutal. I mean, because they have a lot of history between themselves. So this is a brutal, drawn out, like fight to the death thing until the very last moment. Like yeah. it's, that was a, that was almost a tough fight to watch. 
Yeah. In a way, it's just because they're both putting boxer cutters through their mouths hey, and throats and shit. Ugh. I think they were trying to push the boundary on that as much as they could. Once I saw how uh, the setting and the environment, if you follow like uh, like the raid and you know these kind of movies, you already knew it's like, oh, this is gonna be a bloodbath. Yeah, like, like leading up to that, you already saw the power tools and everything. You were like, oh, it's gonna be. Gruesome. Yeah, once you put two Asian men in a in a warehouse, you know some some terrible shit's about to <laughs> and go. And they down. sweating. <laughs> and they take and it there. There has to at least be a machete he or a bat. A sweatshop. That's messed up. No. That's messed up. He <laughs> no. said there's sweat. All right. No, they had All the butcher right. shops in this. They had the butcher All shop because right. that dude was. Yeah, like, I remember. <laughs> that was that was nasty though because he had uh, the the real beef meat next to the human mm-hmm. meat, and then he was going. I was like, "What kind of food do you want, sir? What kind of meat do you want?" I was like, "That's gross." Not even gonna yeah. wash yeah. the clothes. You can get nuts. Don't even know it. You Why order something, you they just give you some nuts, man. Human nuts. This is your friend, Kay. Um, you do a show with him. Right? Yeah, but that's <laughs> that's a, a business. That's not. You have a longer. That's that's a business. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's... Closely related there. <laughs> oh sweet lord! <laughs> um, and so basically, uh, Ito he takes his uh, little girl and he goes to his ex girlfriend's house. Who apparently is hooking up with his uh, old gangmate, right? Because they had that little moment with the hand in the hallway. Oh, oh yeah, it's like yeah. yeah, get on out of here. He was like, go, he was like, Shantika, Shantika, it's okay. Uh, we'll talk. Yeah, go. Um, and then uh, basically, uh, she tells because she like helps him bandage up because he got fucked up. He got shot. He got shot from behind when he uh, killed everybody else. And so basically. Um, she bandages him up, and then she tells his old associates, like these old gang members that he used to roll with. Yeah. And one of them is white boy Bobby B- Bull or something like that. And that dude was out of his mind. He was a drug addict who fucking had a, a, a prosthetic ankle foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was, I mean, he was crazy and unsettling until he started getting busy. And then you're like, oh, this is a fun character. And then he died in the most brutal way possible. Yeah, everyone, everyone we got to know died brutally. It was like watching the Adventures of Huckleberry Finn again. It was <laughs> fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> it wasn't that uh, Huckleberry Finn wasn't that violent. That's, but I, I'm like, yeah. what? That's but, not the reference. No, the, I, I, use, Elijah Wood movie wasn't that violent. But everyone that that kid and the uh, nigga Jim or whatever his name is came in contact with, they all died. <laughs> Everyone in that movie, the kind of content with who helped them out, they, they were like, Yeah, Miss Larry, she died. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, okay, Brandon. <laughs> With the Huckleberry Finn fucking. <laughs> That's what wow. I do, Wow. In these type of films, there's always like one. They, I, I feel like they love exploring extremes because there will always be one character that's like, like who the fuck wrote this? Like who is that? Like the distant uncle? Like the one that is just totally off the wall, sideways, like batshit crazy. Yeah, like old dog. But he's a in good the guy. Movies, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, well, old dog Almost was the bad superhero. Dude. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's mm-hmm. there's always one character that's just like keeps going. I mean, because white boy killed the dudes in the in the elevator, mm. then he helps with the the fucking ambush. In the apartment where they got rushed by how many? At least forty dudes. Yeah, all with like axes and machetes and, and shit. I mean, his own. One, I mean, one of Ito's friends, his gang was down for. The, they were down for shit because mm-hmm. one dude had a big table holding it up while niggas are chopping away with it at with machetes. And I was like, how do you even strategize to get out of this? Like, you just holding on, waiting for your damn. Uh... You know, the, the, the next opening so well, you can get these motherfuckers up out of there. Well, that's a question I have for you, Kay, is when you're stunt fighting like this, right? And let, let's say you're really taking both the stunt work and the acting seriously. In order to do that, don't you kind of have to play these characters in these situations like, I'm about to fight for my life. Like, literally, if I don't win, I die. Like, And how do you, as a stunt coordinator, like, I guess... That, that requires you to get into the mindset of a lot of different characters, right, in order to make sure that the fighting is authentic. Like, if, like let's say if I'm a character in a movie, like, it's Brandon, the character, and I have to fight for my life. It's not going to be well uh, structured, like, exactly. practice. It's going to be very raw, frantic, maybe, depending on how I handle stress, right? Like, mm-hmm. so, like, just, I don't know if you have experience, like, kind of supporting actors do that, but, like, what's your, if you do, like, what, what do you tell them? How do you work that out? 
That's uh, that's a really, really great question. I think a lot of the things we see, a lot of stunt people who are very talented, talented fighters put these amazing like fight sequences up on like Instagram and stuff like that or YouTube. But when you're looking at a story, I have to look at the script like as when I'm choreographing and coordinating, I'm like, who is this character? Like uh, you can't have like some soccer mom fighting a burglar and doing like like triple roundhouse kicks or like 540s and stuff like that you gotta be like she's scared but also wait is her son sleeping upstairs now that kind of changes things now it's like i i don't care if there's a kitchen knife a, a flag a, a book whatever you know that kind of desperation uh you got to put it in and know what the background is of these characters you know are are they brave are they uh a former Marine, are they, you know, and you put it together, you know, their fighting style with their experience. And even the same fighter, like Ito, throughout the movie, he's in different places emotionally, physically. Yep. So he's yep. not always going to fight the same. Like Justin was saying, some people are just invincible. They're a badass through the whole thing. No, when he's tired, you see him punching just like, yeah swinging and missing and tired like all all that comes together so i i try to yeah i put myself in the head of each person i think that's the reason why so many people fuck with the fight scenes in daredevil now that you like you know you mentioned mm-hmm. like you get tired because that mm-hmm. was the thing that he justin and i always talked about that we loved about the fight scenes it's like okay yeah he can fight 20 dudes but after 10 he's gonna be really fucking tired same yeah. with John Wick. You see John Wick, like, slowing yeah. down. Like, he speeds yeah. up, and then he's just like, okay, let me be methodical, but I'm going to take my time because I'm fucking mm-hmm. tired. Um, and this movie was a similar way, but I love that you talked about how Ito fights differently throughout the movie based on his emotional level because by the time we get to the third act, he's determined. So when he goes into that old warehouse that he and his oh. gang used to be at, yeah. like, mm-hmm. he is prepared. To, he's like, it's going to be a lot of dudes in here, and I'm going to take some hits, but yeah. I'm going I'm to I'm end this all tonight. Yeah, like he's on a mission. Well, and it's also just the fact is like the way that he was coming at people and the way he was finishing them, there was a lot of finality. So he was going for the kill with a lot of people. In, in you have he, to. You can't put your ba- turn your back to any of those dudes. Well, and, and that's the thing. It's like, you know, uh, in the film, it's just, you know, as he's fighting, like those guys, they're taking swings at his back with a fucking knife and things yeah. like that. Oh, that's when he had the phone book, right? Yeah. That was smart. Mm-hmm. Like, as you yeah. see, like... Uh, I loved how they had, like, little things that they would, like, show a close-up of real quick, and you're kind of like, what the hell was that about? But then it does pay off because, you know, some movies just throw some random shit in. Like, with White Boy, when it, like, zoomed in real quick on the mop, the mm-hmm. metal mop sign, yeah. you're like, okay, I guess he's going to do something with that mop. And then he actually takes the mop sign and batches that dude's oh. head in. I was like, Well, oh. no, no, no. Before that, he put the mop sign inside of his clothes. Yeah, so when the right, dude yeah. shot him up, yeah, he yeah. was shooting a metal sign. So that that's awesome. how he didn't die. So I was just like, wait, how's he still alive? And also he pulled out, I'm like, white oh, boy, shit. White boy, though, he was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but he, even though at the same time, if I'm shooting somebody, I'm shooting him in the head. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, it, I got a machine gun. I'm making sure I'm like, right here. Right well, th- here. that's the thing, too, with this. Like, because I thought, like, I was like, oh, well, yeah, if he survived that, like, because he didn't get a headshot, he's probably mm-hmm. going to make it pretty far. And then I remember this, these movies are basically like Game of Thrones shit. Like, they're like, <laughs> we'll kill you at the main character. Like, like mm-hmm. no one's safe. Right. And so, yeah. um, because I thought when uh, Ito was at the butcher place mm-hmm. and he finds out that the dude was actually working with the triad and they all ambush it and, like, light it up with Uzis. Yeah. I was like, there's no way that he's alive behind that table. Yeah, because you know all they what had I mean? to do was point down. Well, <laughs> well, also, they're shooting like 10 bullets at each at a time. Like, mm-hmm. he ain't living. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The uh, little Ikea just ain't going to stop bullets. That's true. So, you know, it's something interesting. Um, and, you know, okay, I, I'd love to hear what you think about this. Because it's just something I've always noticed. I'm pretty sure I said it on the podcast before. So, like, for, for me, like, uh, Michael Ja White, right? A f- phenomenal uh, martial artist. Um, you know, it does some great uh, films and things like that. But, like, one of the things that uh, that makes me very critical about about his films and about a lot of his action scenes are, and, and to just America and how we do things, Michael Ja White, now, if you don't know, like I said, he's a, He's a, a very accomplished martial artist. Played Spawn. Outs- in no, but, but, first- but in real life, he's a I very know, but like, you got to give people, like, because uh, not everybody knows he does that. You know okay, I mean? fair enough. 
Yeah, played Spawn. Uh, he was in the uh, Why Did I Get Married one and two, and he also uh, was like um, a Steven Seagal film. Yeah, he was uh, in the Dark Jean-Claude Knight. Claude Van Damme uh, in uh, what's that? Uh, Universal Soldiers. Why are you two, getting like older that? with the movie references? No, because that's where he he also played Mike Tyson. That that was like his uh, claim to fame. Oh yeah, he did play Mike Tyson. Yeah. So um, the thing is, because <laughs> he's such a great martial artist, a lot of times. I feel like he doesn't sell um, in his films. So, like, because he's so, you know, it's almost his style is very effortless and there's no uh, real wind up to it. And for me, it comes across as like he has not a worry in the world fighting the other person that he's fighting. And that's a, and it's completely different from when I'm watching these guys fight. I feel yeah. like there's far more stakes. And it's just like, oh, this guy's getting messed up, or or this guy wants to kill him. Michael Jai White is just like, there's an air of invincibility in his movements. It's not even just a character, but it's in his mm-hmm. movements. But and it's because he's such a strong martial artist that he's trained in, in a certain way that he's just like, it, and it's just how he moves. Yeah, but that also that is on him as the actor. No, a hundred percent to make sure that his character is vulnerable enough or portrays that because. You know, it and it is tough if you like really get, but like you don't want to get so crazy. Like you're like Steven Seagal, where like yeah. you come off invincible, but no one wants to work with you. Yeah, you know, because well, I, mean? I would say it's also about the people that he has the opportunity to work with in films. Because the director and writer of The Night Comes for Us, uh, Timu Jatanto, uh, which I'm sure I'm mispronouncing, um, I think like had a very specific story and vision, and got this cast and stunt team to buy into it, and that's why it's executed so well. Yes. Okay. But knowing. The way Michael Jai White is, you're right. It's it's up to him as the actor. He is a phenomenal martial artist. But I also know, uh, not just him, but there are other stars that like I want to look amazing. I want to be yeah, invincible. Sure. I sure. don't want to. If Michael, you know, if a normal guy gets hit, he's like out of the screen. Michael Jai White gets hit, he's like, Psh, he's back there. He's yeah. It's just that's the way he wants to be. Yeah. He wants to portray that. I know exactly what you're talking about with his kicks, with his moves. He wants himself to be. The stakes aren't as high because yeah, you're like it, this guy's not human. It, it's all oh, yeah. It's almost like he's an unstoppable force. It's actually, mm-hmm. I would say, it's almost uh, very eighties. It sounds yeah, like it's like Reacher, which is like why everyone's like uh, for the new season mm. of the Amazon show. I guess they got like the biggest dude, like one of the biggest muscle dudes in the world because I guess he's huge. And so everyone's like, he's invincible. But now they got this bigger dude. You know oh, what I who's mean? supposed to be the villain? Yeah, yeah. So it's like because I know that that's like a not a complaint, but something that people say about Reacher the show. Yeah. Cause yeah. The, yeah. The guy playing Jack Reacher, he's he's a big guy. He's a yeah. really fucking big dude. He, he was actually almost uh, Thor. Yeah. Chris Hemsworth got it, but that's that's how big a guy he is. Like when you put it into perspective, like he was almost Thor. Yeah. So that size and stature. He was he but, was in that show Blue Mountain. Oh my God! It was a comedy. Oh, a Blue show. Mountain Resort. No, no, it's a Blue Mountain College, or it's like it's like a it was like a comedy football. Blue show. Mountain State. You yes. said. Yes, uh, he was he was from that show. That's where you know he came from. He did not look like that. Like he yeah. put on some serious pounds. I think he's almost like either like two fifty, but it was like yeah. solid muscle. You yeah. know who he also played, Raphael in those Michael Bay Turtle movies. Yeah, because he 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 did an interview where he talked about how terrible of an experience it was working on that movie. Yeah, but and and uh, also on top of that, he also put a lot of uh, muscle on from there. Yeah, because he was a lot thinner mm-hmm. in the, uh, which is insane. Was, yeah, because they didn't even see his face. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know why we just both did mm-hmm. that, but um, <laughs> I I wrote down on my notes like several times. I used the word brutal. I was like, holy shit, a few times. Um, I did think the dude like the who was running the butcher shop when he started getting punched and he started laughing maniacally. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. he's trying to get his Joker on. Yeah. It felt very Joker esque in that moment, but um. Yeah, man, some of these fight scenes just fucked me up. Like, when uh, Bobby bashed that dude's head in with the skull, I'm like, I haven't seen something that, like, visceral, like, regards to head wounds since uh, Negan killed, uh, what's his name, on The Walking Dead. Oh, with the bat? Mm. Yeah, which, mm-hmm. after I saw that, I was like, oh, I get why regular, like, cable-watching audiences were like, yeah, I don't want to watch The Walking Dead anymore. Like, because if you're not ready for that, like, you're just like, what the fuck? Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, that's but a good... then that's not to mention all the don't get me started on the knife girl and blow you know shooting using human shields versus gunfire oh like yeah. arms being blown off fingers being blown off yeah everything like that and so the the chick that played the operator that actress um whose Julia name is uh, Julia Estelle yeah she's a hammer girl from Ray hammer two. girl and I wrote yep. down hammer girl is a cutie when she has yeah, full yeah, uh, yeah, eyes yes, sir. oh yeah yes, sir. when she's she doesn't have an acid <laughs> acid ridden out uh eye she she a cutie mm-hmm Oh, yes, she is. Yeah, she yeah. was fucking shit up, too. When they had the... I did write that. I was like, it would be cool to see... It would be cool to see a movie with the operator as the lead or something like that. Yes. Like, give a yes. female, like, these one of these badass females that could do these stunts the lead mm-hmm. role. Because mm-hmm. it was like... It was cool to have all three of them fighting each other. And I did. I was like, I know why y'all did that, because you don't want to see a dude beating up all, you know, you know, one of these women or something like that. But... Mm-hmm. It, it just would be cool to see a female like kind of in a movie like this. The closest we've gotten to that, I think, would be Charlize Theron in Atomic Blonde, and that's yeah. a lot for stunt double, I imagine. Well, we've yeah. had a, a few now. That's kind of become a big thing in America. Like, there was, was a Lucy one, or... Oh, there's Scarlett a couple, Johansson? Yeah, there's been a couple oh, yeah. where it's just like, um, you know, double agent, CIA. Yeah. There's a, a couple on Netflix like that, but I would love to see one as in-depth as something like in Indonesia, you know, like taking it to that next level where it's not just uh, all guns, but physical combat, like fighting. Do you think it's because yeah. some of the fights are just atomically, they would freak people out? Like, and what I mean by that is, you know, right in, like in the warehouse scene. And no, and not even that, in the butcher shop scene. Yeah. Uh, there's a stunt, there's a moment where Ito takes a hook and hooks it into a dude's groin and then rips it out. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I don't know if you can, I don't know if just visually or like, I, I don't know. I think that there's something mentally, like I, we would need to get a psychologist on or some shit that like, I think that would be such a visceral thing to watch that you couldn't, I don't know. I think well, really. Are we talking people. about in America or Western? Media? I think even like, yeah, I think even in like Indonesia, like in countries that make these kind of movies, I think yeah. that's the reason why they haven't done it. So uh, I, I'll, I'll jump in here really quick. Okay. I think overseas, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll get more of that. And it's, and it's not as people, huh, because you got to realize that here in the States, we are far more prude with a lot of things. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, I'm and, and, do you know? But yeah. Also, on top of that, I think the biggest thing. I love how you react to that. <laughs> yeah. Like, it is, uh, is like, is the ratings. You know, NC seventeen R PG thirteen. Uh, yeah. So I yeah. think that plays a lot into what you're going to see in films because our rating uh, structure is a lot more stringent uh, than other places. So if you're going to make a movie and it has you know somebody's groin getting ripped out with a hook, uh, that may pump up. Yeah, uh, what is this Candyman? Ra- yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, but that may pump it up from a you know from a t- PG thirteen to NC uh, NC seventeen. Right there, that would be insane then, if you presented that kind of movie and scene, and you're expected a PG thirteen. <laughs> but it, no, no. But it, you could you could have a film which is not that crazy, and then that one thing jumps it up to NC. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. So th- yeah. Therefore, therefore, you've also limited uh, the kinds of people who can watch that film. You know, without having to get a parent or you know somebody else, to, you know, to vouch for it. Even though I will say, went to Deadpool today at Alamo Draft House, three young ass niggas. We definitely were 18. No parental guidance. Yeah. I was like, oh, we're not even IDing these little motherfuckers anymore? I, I, I literally just got out of Deadpool as well. And there was a little kid up in there. By with the parents. Oh, with okay. the parents, but there's a little kid oh, up yeah, in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was a few like, kids. this is, is not for you. It was crazy, It's man. getting lower and lower. Like, the ratings, like, it used to be, like, there could be no nudity, no cursing, no violence, no anything. But, you know, as... Like we become more and more, I don't want to say desensitized. No, it is. You're right. <laughs> it is. It's like, it's a natural. I mean, these kids could pick up like their phone and just see all that anyway. That so is true. I yeah. feel like the ratings have gone lower, but we have things like Saul and things that like challenge, uh, discussing stuff, human centipede and stuff. Yeah. But, you know, these things in a, in a action film, you're probably not expecting to see. 
I'm know. I'm just more like uh, bitter about it because the, I can't tell you how many times I had to sneak into American Pie before I finally saw the fucking movie itself. These niggas were like the CIA coming at me. <laughs> it's like, sir, do you have a ticket for this? No, I do not. Leave me alone. I want to watch this nigga fi- fuck a pie. <laughs> they kept kicking me out. Just. My hand is in my pocket for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I uh, yeah, she was awesome as the operator. Um, yes, can we also sniping niggas? Can we also uh, fucking shout out uh, Hannah Al uh, Rashid? Cause uh, she was like the blonde girl. The blonde girl who's, she's, you know, 100% Asian. Uh, you know, like, she looks completely different. Like, she really transformed for that role. She, like, she looked like she was, like, you know, like a white girl that they just, like, like yeah. oh, we're going to plug this white girl. She is not white. <laughs> not by any means of it. But she is gorgeous. I thought they all were gorgeous. No, yes, but still. No, look at yes. her. L- look at her. Oh, no, I did. Yeah. I mean, there's some wild pictures of her online. Yeah, she's kind of looked like the Joker. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, she, everyone was pretty. Every, I'm not pretty, but everyone was a good-looking person. Yeah. You know, even, like, a Joe Taslim, who I was like, why isn't he getting more American? Ro-? You know what it is? He probably intimidates the fuck out of American actors. Oh, I meant. So. Especially with action movies. Like, I can see, I can see people like, yeah, I'm not going to do all of this, so... <laughs> How do we water this down where I look good and beating you, but you don't outshine well, me? That kind of happened with uh, Eco when he was in uh, Mile 22 with Mark Wahlberg. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so I have a whole thing I can talk about Asian men and Hollywood, but that's uh, another thing. But I'm here for e- it. Eco's uh, Eco's really amazing in that movie. Okay. And uh I don't know if any of you guys have watched it, but Mark Wahlberg's character is an asshole. He's a dick. He's just very unlikable. And fast forward to the end, you know, it's uh Eco is the one that needs to get saved and rescued by Mark Wahlberg and um his team. And ends up like he's the bad guy. In the original script. Mark Wahlberg was the bad guy, but Mark Wahlberg didn't like that this guy was getting the shine and he was like this badass superstar. He was like, I want to be the good guy. Change the script. Well, so I that's mean, like Mark Wahlberg was also beating up an Asian man in, <clears throat> in uh, Boston. So he obviously has some things against, uh, you know, Asian men. So, you know, of course he would do that. <laughs> Apparently you can't bring yeah. up any of his past indiscretions, even jokingly. He gets like, like he'll fucking yeah lose oh, his mind. Did, did you know that he tried to get that? Shit oh yeah, expunge wiped? right? Yeah, 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 expunge because he wanted to become a part time cop. Oh, I'm sure that's the reason. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm absolutely not surprised by that. Yeah, that's like, like that's that's wild. Hey, Mark, yeah. get your life together, brother. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that is um, that's definitely unfortunate because there's there's no reason why these two gentlemen. I mean, including um, the gentleman from Warrior, who I was actually thinking about. Um, the guy who plays Assam? Yeah, I mean, like... Uh, Andrew Koji. Okay, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I remember when, when Justin finally introduced me to Warrior, right? Um, and I finally started watching it. I, like, remember hitting him up and being like, why didn't they just get the whole fucking cast of this for Mortal Kombat? Yeah. Like, it's insane. <laughs> like, you had all the talent over here. Yeah. Like, they do stunts, even... Even the white dudes were getting busy. I'm like, I'm sure it's not fully them, but the stunt team on the show is fucking getting it. Nuts. Yeah, it's the coordinator nuts. the coordinator on that is super talented. I know some of the stunt team members on that. Uh they Brett Chan, I think. Mm. Uh he did he was the coordinator for Iron Fist, although he didn't get to really show uh, off his <laughs> stuff there. But super talented. He's got a great team. So for Warrior, uh it would have been amazing to see more of them in mortal Kombat, but on my theory or it's not even a theory the way hollywood works if you look at it uh perfect example why don't asian men get more leading roles or things like that it's like you know you gotta fight up the ladder you know i know this for a fact like well i mean and and that's like this is this is not something new. This goes back to, you know, the 70s, Bruce Lee. I mean, just the fact that Warrior is actually yeah. Bruce Lee's actual original thing for for uh, that, you know, for Kung Fu, that they mm-hmm. basically just like, yeah, we can't have no Asian guy re- uh, leading this thing, and they gave it to David Carradine. Yep. You know, it's like, and honestly, I didn't think that they just stole his shit, and he didn't get shit from that. Yeah. 
So it's yeah. like, yeah. like this, you know, it, it's just the way, you know, the, the yeah. business is for certain yeah. kinds of people. And it's the, like, just much like as black men have, you know, said in the business for a, a very long time is like, it's always seemed like there can only be one at a time. And it was in every aspect. It's like, there's one, uh, um, you know, action black, it was one action black. There's one comedy black. There's one this you know drama black and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And like I feel like now we're starting to move away from that. The good thing is we're starting to get um, some uh, some films, television shows, and things like that, which are giving us more Asian um, Asian actors, which are you know well I guess more diverse uh, cast, which in the uh, swaying Asian, uh, but still the breakout stars are one at a time. It's, mm-hmm. it's really one at a time yeah. because uh, mm-hmm. like Tony, yeah, he was the guy, he was the guy. And then he kind of fucked it up, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and then, you know, now it's like, uh, who's the, the new next one. Yeah. Comes. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, just want to use this as an opportunity to tell people to please watch warrior on Netflix, try to get those numbers up. Cause if they get big enough, maybe the studio would consider at least <laughs> giving us final season, if not movie, because it's literally the best, in regards to American TV, best fighting I've ever seen. Yeah. Like, hands down. Yeah. Like, if you if you were, like, Hasbro and, uh, what is it, Paramount maybe, and you wanted to do a Power Rangers reboot, but you really wanted to make it, like, Cobra Kai, but even better, I would say get the Sun Coordinator for Warrior and, like, get rocking because that can look yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's, it's horrible that you got, okay, Warrior didn't get picked up by HBO Max. It's on Netflix now. So they're like, everyone stream it, stream it, stream it. I, I know a few of the cast members from that and they were all on Instagram. Just like, it was, when it came out on Netflix, it was like number one. It's yeah. definitely in the top ten. Yep. Uh, and they're like, pick it up. Uh, Brother's Son didn't get picked up. Oh, that's right. You yeah. know, uh, I think All American Family didn't, all these like things but it always comes from money talks, right? I'm glad you brought up Tony Ja. Tony Ja was big because of Ong Bak. And then where was he? And Fast and Furious. And then other things. Joe Taslow, big because of the raid. What was he on? The next Fast and Furious yeah. as the mm-hmm. bad guy. And then he goes on to other things, Mortal Kombat Warrior. It's like they want to be able to market you. Uh, but also, you got to be not for nothing like, an exec said and Henry Golding, he was the lead for Crazy oh, Rich yeah. Asians. Yep. They're like, you know why he can be a romantic lead? Because he's half white. Yeah. You know why Andrew Koji could be a lead? Because oh, he's, British. he's half white. Yeah. You know, like that. You yeah. know, they want to be like, oh, now they're more marketable. But Asian men, you're only good, like you said, one at a time. You're only good for action. We had Jackie Chan. We had Jet Li. Who's next? Well, well, well and like, that's the know. crazy thing because if you really look at it, and I know we're going down a long rabbit hole of uh, yeah, exactly. Stuff, but like Bruce Lee completely destroyed the mold because he was literally almost like the first Asian man to actually do something on TV where he wasn't a servant. Now, mind you, he also did play um, the Green Hornet's butler. Kato. Yeah, you know, Kato. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, and then he became kind of the breakout star of that show and then goes on. Mm-hmm. And still, as he was ascending as Kato, he didn't get his burn here in the United States until he went back to China, made a bunch of crazy movies. They're just like, yo, let's do something with this guy now. And he'd yeah. been in the business for a while. So then, mm-hmm. Bruce, Lee, uh, Bruce Lee, obviously, uh, you know, very tragic death, right? He got Conspiracy. Up- conspiracy possibly but um he um no well jackie chan got the rub from bruce lee because jackie chan was in the movie with bruce lee. it was in enter the dragon he accidentally hit him with thing and everybody's like oh this jackie chan guy you know he's doing great things but jackie chan still he's doing his thing in china eventually he blows up in china because of rub from bruce lee and then finally somebody notices him i think it's like a police story and things like that they start bringing mm, the police States. story was big yeah and then Rumble in the Bronx is the thing that really blew him up. But, you know, it, it, it was just like Bruce Lee. He had to leave and come back. He yep. had to leave. It, it, they only understand money. They're well, like, is this guy going to make us money? Then you we know? had Jet Li. Jet Li was killing it uh, over in China. 
I'm pretty giant, I, I believe. Um, then he comes over to Le- Lethal Weapon 4, and then he's the hugest fucking star. The yep. thing that stopped Jet Li's uh, real... He uh, started doing black movies. No, no, his New York rise was actually <laughs> stunned by the fact that he doesn't speak great English. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. but I was going to say, you know, Romeo must die in, uh, in uh, the movie he did with DMX, Pride at Hell. They were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like oh, you're going <laughs> that direction. <laughs> that was we, interesting. I didn't expect what, that. that Will is. you star in a movie against uh, DMX? What was that? Cradle to the Grave? Cradle to the Grave. Yeah. yeah. And, Anthony, <laughs> and Anthony Anderson calling them fucking dim sum or some shit like that? That is, like, <laughs> that is one of the craziest movies ever. Like, it was just, why are these two partners? This would never happen. DMX... Anyways, they were like, he's a hacker. <laughs> hey, get money. <laughs> like, anyone else no sequel? Um, That's what I'm doing right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hack the mainframe. You know what I'm saying? Damn that shit, for real. But I, I will say, like, even to, uh, you know, we were talking about earlier the sensitivities around ratings. Like, the moment when the, the, the guy, when um, I think it was Ito, tasered a cop, one of the, the, the corrupt cop dudes, in the, the neck, and he shot his gun in the face of another officer, yeah. and that blew off. I was like, oh, this is why this is NC-17. I was like, that is fucking nuts. Yeah. He knew enough that it was like, hey, your finger's on the trigger. I'm going to tase you. You immediately lock yeah. up. Boom. Mm-hmm. I also wrote down about the little girl. I said, I haven't seen a little kid in so much danger in a movie since Jurassic Park. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, this little girl's in trouble. <laughs> these these Asian men are like dinosaurs. <laughs> well, it was that. And then also you had the, the female, uh, the two female members of the, the six C's. Yeah. Who mm-hmm. were like brutal. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, and they were not hesitating. They called her a little bitch. I was like, oh, they want, they, they gonna smile Bro, killing this little when girl. When she's hiding in the closet and the dude's trying to stick a knife in there, I was like, God damn. That's why I said she's gonna be fucked up. You thought Lori Strode had issues after Mike Myers. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody got nothing against the Southeastern Triad. <laughs> the fucking good luck taking them down, Mike Waves Myers. and waves of men just trying to kill me. I mean, she literally, we opened the movie with her seeing her mom get lit up on a beautiful beach like a Christmas tree. It's not good. That's, that's, it, that's how we start the movie, guys. You know what? It's, you know, it's kind of crazy if you think about it. That is the worst kind of Baywatch. you Because she's running on the beach. And she was not ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was because not ready. Because the theme song says, I'll be ready. Mm-hmm. You oh, weren't for them bullets. Oh, that little girl was standing in the darkness. <laughs> and she was afraid <laughs> to step into the light. <laughs> Show so out of control. Oh, no yes, it is. Yes, um, it is. I, I, one of my lines was, Oh, because, um, you know, Ito's best friend sacrificing himself by like being the decoy. He's like, Hey, hide in the parking structure. I'm gonna drive toward these dudes because he's already fucked up yeah. and mm-hmm. he sacrifices himself and he gets lit up. <laughs> and then the little girl, she got grabbed and she started stabbing the dude. I was just like, This little girl will not go quietly into the night. Mm-hmm. These, these triad dudes do not know who they're fucking with. Well, by that point, she's seen some shit. I was oh, going to yeah. say. Yeah, she, she knows she, she has to kill everybody around her, which is going to make mm-hmm. her a terrible foster child. Um, <laughs> that's going to be a rough go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that's going to be wild, dude. Basically, she can't trust oh, any adult around her except for Ito. So she's got to, she, in her head, she's like, we got to be on call to kill anybody at any time. Yo, if you really think about it, she's the chick from uh, The Boys. <laughs> like, that's her origin story. <laughs> Was the, the the Asian girl? Uh, that's uh, that's what Kamiko. Yes. Kamiko. Thank you, yeah. Yuvia. Yeah, she is beautiful. She and, is. Uh, she is gorgeous. She's when they when she's, <laughs> she's not gorgeous. like they don't they made her look prettier. Like let her mm-hmm. like actually put some makeup on and stuff this season. But like in person, she is beautiful. Oh, l- listen, like Asian women are having a moment listen. because I I started watching Shogun. Oh yeah, Anna, yeah, yeah, Anna, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Anna. I'm not even calling <laughs> you your full name, Anna. If you listen to Media Popcorn. Send us an email, mediumpod at gmail.com. Don't send we will take email. you to the best dinner of your life. We will take oh you my. to a sizzler. No. We will <laughs> take you to a sizzler. Don't do that. No, no. Anna deserves nothing but the no. finest foods. We will take you to a Anna sizzler. Anna Sawai, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, please, email us. <laughs> just what? just say, hey, the password, the password uh, to let us know that it's really you is Brandon is the best. That's the password, Okay. That really? It really? Yeah. Is that what it is? Is that what it is? I thought you had said something like Harigato or some bullshit like that. That's what I was waiting for to come out of your mouth. You said, Brandon is the best. <laughs> that's the best you can think yeah, of. Yeah, right? that's the best you can think of. In I was the like, Prince Darling was supposed to make a comeback <laughs> yeah, or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. 
Oh, boy. <laughs> this just shows off the rails. Um, he was dead at the end, right? Ito, after he gets her on that boat? Uh, yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, we didn't even talk about the final fight between him and um, uh, Arian, which that was so crazy. And then also, um, when Arian kicked that steel beam, he missed Ito. And he like he like you know he's like ah I was like yo that's probably the worst pain of this entire fight. Yeah, I when you kick a steel beam with all your might and it, you you hit it with your toe. Yeah, no, you you hit it. He hit him with his shin. Shin. Yeah, he's hitting with his shin. Oh, that shit can snap your shin real yeah. fast. Yeah. yeah, I did think it was funny though at the beginning of that fight though when uh, Ariane's like he's like that's all you got E two and I'm like he he just fought forty dudes downstairs. Yeah. Like, are you man it. enough? Are you man enough to fight for niggas for me? <laughs> like, come on. So, you know what's crazy, though, is the fact is that... Uh, Did, there's does Kato that movie is referenced to? What's that? Did, guess what movie that that sound by from Justin's uh, in reference to? I have no idea. About fighting four dudes. It's Footloose. <laughs> That's a <laughs> reference to Footloose. <laughs> That's so dumb. Because like so she was a man and he didn't fight like a bunch of dudes for her. Like it was just insane. Um <laughs> but, but like there, so there's a point where they're yeah. fighting in the fight and then like, you know, they're both pretty fucked up. And mm. uh, Ito, like like well, he knocked him over like these steel beams or something like that. Uh-huh. And he tries to stand up and then the beam rolls and he kind of falls. I was like, that's it's a little yeah. shit like that. That and makes it's track, fights, yeah. It was a tracking shot too, so a pan shot, so you know that that's authentically like you can't cut that together. Yeah. It's really hard. Yeah. Um, like it's, it's awesome. little shit like that. I love in a fight scene, or it's just like it. It, it, it makes it. It just yeah. it really does make it. And they also they're not perfect. Yes, they're not invincible. So they also, I'm I'm pretty sure. Ah, oh, fuck. Um. Yeah, it's this movie because I I've been watching a lot of movies lately. No, but it's, it's this movie. They had an ode to um, uh, f- uh, the Bruce Lee movie Chuck Norris, uh, Game of Death. I was gonna say Sidekicks, but that that sounds more accurate. Um, no, no, Way of the Dragon. I'm sorry. Is it Way of the Dragon? Okay, I don't know. You, with I just the, said Sidekicks, so you know they with the claws, and the scratches. No, no, no that's no, no, a no, no, no. Which one? No, it's a Bruce Lee movie where they're fighting the Coliseum. Bruce Lee. I think it's way. Is it Chuck way of the Norris? Dragon? Yeah, it's an old. They were in a few movies together: The Way of the Dragon, Game of Death, Dragon to Dragon, The Fist of Justice. No, no, they were only in. Um, Those it, are the things it, that it, popped it's up. Way of the Dragon. It's Way of the mm-hmm. Dragon. So, in that movie, uh, they have a thing where the, you know, uh, you know, they're you know, kind of facing off, and then the fight starts with a cat uh, meowing, and then they start fighting. In this movie. I, th- I believe it's the girls. They're, they're in the, the hallway or something like that. And then a fly flies into the bug zapper. And then that's what starts uh, the mm. fight. It's like little shit like that. I was like, oh, I know exactly what they're fucking referencing. But you have to be a fucking, you know, martial arts movie fucking nerd to pick up some shit like that. <laughs> but it's like, it's just so fucking good. It's so fucking good. Yeah. And it's like the, the little shit. Something that Brendan mentioned earlier is like when it's a uh, panning and you see they don't cut. That's something also that I think uh, it deters why it won't be the same in America. Because you watch anything, it'll be a lot of quick, short yep. cuts uh, where they'll film this piece and film this piece. Because you gotta think these two guys are going at it, or the two girls, they're fighting, or forty guys in a long sequence. So if someone fucks up. You got to reset all the way to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like they're trying to get one long take of this done perfectly or imperfectly where someone's slipping and they keep going, like keep going. They're, they're actually tired through this. And you're like, whoa, they didn't cut zoom switch anything. That's these two people doing it. No stunt double, no anything. I think actually Ungbach had the, um, had the record for the longest uh, scene, like fight scene, the one where he's going up the stairs. Ooh. Yeah, because that's one continuous shot. That's All, insane. Yeah, that's that's one continuous shot. Mm. He's he's climbing up those stairs and knocking those guys yeah. off, shit mm. like that. Like it's nuts. It's nuts. That's why everyone, everyone loves Daredevil. Much. Daredevil loves mm-hmm. the hallway scene. Yep. yep. It's for things like that where you're like, wow, it's just a camera. It's and real it's time. Going, you know. 
Yeah. Just... Daredevil, they were able to cheat a little bit because it's, it's all the the, the, the yeah. tone, the mood, because a lot of stuff happens inside a room and you just like kind of right. hear it. Um, mm-hmm. But then you see things happening in what's seemingly real time. Um, mm-hmm. There was another one shot too, like I think in season three, the prison escape scene. That was yeah, like a one yeah, shot yeah, too, yeah, yeah. or it like edited to look like it. But um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think this movie has a lot of solid moments and like really cool, obviously fights and stunts and stuff. But I also know I can see why when we posted this on Patreon, like compared to the raid and other Indonesian fighting movies, this didn't get any comments because I think after the first twenty minutes, when you see how violent this is compared to the other ones, it might turn you off. Yeah, well, not for me. I'm I, in. <laughs> I for, I forgot the, the. There's a new movie that Andrew Koji's in. That is gonna be wild. Uh, look it up. It's an action movie, and it's okay. gonna be very boy kills like, world. Yeah, it's gonna be insanity. Hopefully, I'm hoping oh, that's it what the has kind of. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I'm hoping. I'm hoping it's kind of Indonesian esque. That it's just like, huh? Like off the rails, like crazy. I didn't real uh, realize Andrew Koji is actually in Bullet Train. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a weird role, but yeah, he doesn't get to fight or anything like that. Oh, really. Okay. Yeah. Um, but Justin, uh, break down our rain system, baby. So first of all, stop calling me baby. So, uh, guys, you know how we do this. We rate movies, bags of popcorn, small, medium, Never large, and the XL for the exceptional. If a film doesn't deserve any hot, buttery, fresh popcorn, mm-hmm. we throw it into the stale popcorn pile. We pile piles and piles of stale popcorn on top of it. So, Kay, we sat down and watched the 2018 Indonesian action thriller, the Night Comes for Us, starring Joe Taslim, uh, Iko Uwais, and a bunch of other amazing uh, actors whose names I don't want to butcher on this show. <laughs> so, uh, Kay, what say you, my friend? Uh, I feel like I'm a little biased towards this because of where I'm at and what they did. But looking at storyline, looking at even characters like the operator, looking at the arc that everything goes through, not just the action as a whole, I'm going to have to give this an uh, extra large. Oh, like, okay. Okay. It's, it was either large or extra large. It's up there. It's one of my favorite movies. I got you. Okay. Yeah, All right. Uh, I'm giving this a medium just because it was just, uh, there were some there were some parts where I had to pause and kind of step away for a second. <laughs> I'm like, this is a lot for like a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And Versus like, uh, The Raid 2 is pretty violent too. Like, I don't want to seem like mm-hmm. this is so over the top, but it just, it hit a little bit differently, you know, because I think... I think with the uh, with the raid, it's more like you're it's almost warrior esque, where you're not really like you're watching the story unfold, but you're kind of like observing, right? Yeah. Whereas this one, because of the hook, the emotional hook of the little girl, you're like constantly on edge that this little girl actually might die, yeah. and so it's a different feeling, and you're just like, there's no good people in this movie, like. You know what I mean? And even the little girl, she's going to be fucked up. Like, so it's a very dark movie, and you don't feel hopeful at the end. Like, I really didn't. I was like, the only thing that could make me hopeful is maybe somehow E2 survives this at the end, which, no, nope. he's not. <laughs> like, Asian and he movies finds the girl. are very dark. Yeah, yeah and I was like, because <laughs> like I said, that little girl's life is fucking going to be a disaster so. But, I mean, if you really think about it, the underworld of, you know, you know, Asia and things like that, the crime world, is pretty fucking dark. The whole was, world is dark, man. The yeah, world's a dark place, yeah, bro. Y- y- you're right. You're right. But, like, they got some dark shit going on over there in some, <laughs> some areas where it's just it's like, oh, shit. Because, there's, you know, it, it's obviously it's a different culture. Yeah. It is, and, you know, when you start mm-hmm. to deal with triads and shit like that, bro, you don't want none of, you don't want none of that life. I never People talk about it. organized crime over here. <laughs> do not want any well, of that life over that's here. That's what Ito says. Yeah. He's like, we shouldn't, like, you know, this life is just death. Yeah. It's it's nothing. It's not worth getting in these things. Bro, but. when you, so. Uh, you got to give me rain. Man. I know. Real quick, though. But, like, if you talk, like, old, like, MMA fighters, you know, who fought in pride you know, over in Japan. Pride was run by, you know, by the fucking Yakuza. Like, openly run by the Yakuza. And they, they, they talk about these guys who had, like, fingers uh, that were cut off. And, like, if you fuck up, they cut off your finger. Oh, and that one woman had the finger peeling off and she ripped it off the tip. Yeah, Ugh. but think about, like, every guy that you know that's a boss and he has, like, half a finger off. Like, that's... 
it's a different, it's a different kind of uh, thing. Um, so I'm going to give this a large, um, I, I was, I was in, I was in, yes, it was violent. And there was some times I was like, Ooh, God damn. But like, it was masterful. It was a masterclass in the, you know, the, the, the long tracking shots. Um, I mean, and I thought the story was pretty solid as well. And like, so I watched this, uh, Monday night, watched this Monday night, um, Paul went to bed and I was like, I need to watch this film, you know, uh, to record. And then watch this. I went to go get some gas and then Paul went into labor. So this actually set me up for the violence of childbirth. <laughs> so I, I was completely God. desensitized. Congra- so what, what, was the, what was the, what was the come? I guess congratulations are in order, but yeah, Jesus. Man. Congratulations. Well, yeah, yeah, baby number three is here, baby. <laughs> Young Lennox. What's his, oh, oh, yeah, Lennox. This one, yes. yeah, yeah. He's going to lead the uprising. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lennox Brown over there. Yeah. But, like, it, it, it's just, I, I, and it's also, like, I, I, lo- I love to watch films uh, that are going to give me, you know, something different. And, you know, also give me some different looking people. You know, I, I love, you know, you know I, I love to see uh, Asian uh, actors and actresses kind of kind of eating because I know that they, they don't, get to eat over here the way that they should considering the talent uh and what they're bringing to the screen with especially with the martial arts because like what are you guys fucking doing yeah what are you fucking doing that's how we're gonna leave y'all pondering thinking if you know how we're doing and what the fuck we're doing leave us a voice about speakpipe.com slash media and popcorn okay please tell the listeners how they can follow you on social media if they uh you know, like what you had to say about uh, the stunts and the acting and stuff. Yeah, if you want to follow that, uh, my Instagram is at project.ko. So, K-O. Boom. That's me. Yep. There you go. Yeah, uh, Kay, do you have any projects that you're working on right now? Anything that, you know, you want to tell people about? Uh, I think the Amazon Prime commercial I just did with Megan The Stallion for Prime Day, uh, we did that. I, I was saw that. that. I saw that. Okay. Uh, we got... Um, a Netflix series coming out soon with uh, some really star-studded cast uh, directed by Jason Bateman, uh, Jude Laws, and then that, that's okay. coming up soon. So, yeah. Couple okay, things. there you go, I, man. I hear doing work. I hear doing work. <laughs> All right, baby. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, folks, you know, you can follow me at uh, Frodo underscore Blackens on Instagram and threads. You can come out to my one man show on Friday, August 23rd, Air Seinfeld, uh, Soho Playhouse in New York City. Tickets are available at FrodoBlackens.com. You can follow the show at Medium P Podcast and all social media platforms. Be sure to go to MediumPopcorn.com for all your medium popcorn needs. And again, don't forget to leave us a voicemail at SpeakPipe.com slash Medium Popcorn. Justin, how can people follow you as well as uh, support the show financially if they have, uh, you know, the purse strings to do so? Well, guys, you know, you can follow me at Jay Brown did it on all the socials. But if you want to support this show, you need to take yourself over to Patreon, patreon.com slash medium popcorn. We have $2, $5, $10, and $15 packages. Our down. entire backlog goes directly on the Patreon. So you can listen to all your favorite episodes. Yeah, you could get some swag. Uh, well, not on Patreon, but that's at tpublic.com slash medium popcorn. That's right. But again, Patreon, guys, is where you need to be. Patreon.com slash medium popcorn. That's right. We love it. Trillist picks. That's right. We're going to get some trillist picks of K on yep. there yep. at some point. You know, be on the lookout, Patriots. There's a lot coming at you. You're not even going to ask for it. <laughs> hey, it's just gonna hey, hey uh, K, uh, send me some shirtless picks and, uh, you know, <laughs> make sure you got the V. You got to have that V in there. You better be the working taper. out. Yep. You got to taper <laughs> down. Thank I you so much, you. K, for uh, doing the show. We really appreciate it. And, Thanks folks, we'll talk me. to y'all next yeah. week. Peace. Peace. We are two niggas spoiling movies. Yeah. Brandon Collins. That's me. And Justin Brown for your moving needs. Media popcorn. Woo. You haven't seen it, well, we're gonna spoil it. Spoil it in your face. That's your warning. Uh. So if you get pisses or you're fun.